No one can bless the way that you bless. No one can save the way that you save. No one can save the way that you save. No one can bless the way that you bless. No one can save the way that you save. No one can bless the way that you bless. No one can save the way that you save. No one can bless the way that you
There is no one. No one Hallelujah 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 Amen. Amen We bless the name of the Lord God For all We thank him For helping us Say Lord Jesus thank you for helping me carry on. Thank you for helping me carry on. You know, when the Lord was with the disciples in the flesh, you will notice that even though he was with them, there were times where they were left alone. Hallelujah. Even though he was with them, there were times he left them alone. And he told them, go, I will join you when you go. So they took the boat and they went. And they were in the boat. Then came the storm. Hallelujah. But he was the one who told them, go. I will meet you on the other side. You know, there are times the Lord will tell you, go. And he will meet you on the other side. But the reason for it is because before to tell you, go, he trained you how to navigate. And because he trained you how to navigate, he expects you to put in practice or in motion or in actions what he taught you. That's why we say there is no one who can teach the way he teaches. There is no one who can train the way he trains only you can do the things that he does and only you only him can make the things that he made hallelujah let's take our word today from the book of her first king Chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 11 all the way to verse 29. The word that God has given is a paramount of the prayer. Enforcing the promise. Go ahead, please. First King chapter 1, starting from verse 11. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggit, doth reign, and David, our Lord, knoweth it not? So for those of you who don't know, in the story of this specific, he was a son who was named Adonijah, his brother was named Absalom, his big brother. And they were the children of David and Agith. And the mother has certainly concluded that now David is old, dying, and the son has taken the throne, made himself king, and brought Joab, the general of David. He brought also Abiatar, the priest. Hallelujah. And he invited all the sons of the king David, except Solomon. That's the story. Amen. So you will want to go from 2 Samuel until you, uh, the last chapter of 2 Samuel, and you get in this one to understand the context. So go ahead. Read again. 
1 Kings chapter 1, verse 11. Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? Hast thou not heard that the son of Haggith, amen, even though he was the son of David, but they made sure to say he was the son of who? Hallelujah. The son of Haggith was one of the wives of David, even though Bathsheba was the outcast. She was yet in the mind of God. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Bathsheba has committed adultery with David. And her husband has died, oh no, no, has been killed, assassinated by David. So in the sight of everything right, she is an outcast. Amen. The same way we were also outcast from the sight of God because of our sins. But then God comes in, he provides the blood, and when he provides the blood that saves and redeems, he tells us in turn that we ought to be able to be saved and renewed and receive the promises of God. Read again. Wherefore, Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, both reign, doth reign, and David, our Lord, knoweth it not? Mm -hmm. Now therefore, come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel, that thou mayest save thine own life and the life of thy son Solomon. Let me give thee counsel so that you may save thine own life and the life of thy son so Solomon. Continue. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Go and get thee in unto King David mm -hmm. and say unto him, This not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? Hallelujah. Amen. Looking at verse 13, it does not say, uh, you have said to your wife. Amen. You said to your handmaid. I can't believe that he hasn't taken her as wife, but she was definitely among the concubines. Hallelujah. And if you understand the principle of the law, there is two things. The first is you're supposed to have one wife. That's the law. One wife, one husband. So David already sinned by having too many wives and on the top of it, by having the wife of somebody. Amen. And on the top of it, by killing the husband of the wife of somebody. Hallelujah. And on the top of it, by taking her to bring her in his house, in kingdom. He has multiplied sins. He has multiplied abomination. But David had something different than every other king is that he truly understood when he sinned, he truly understood how to repent. It was not a superficial repentance. When he understood the gravity of his sin as spoken by Nathan, automatically he made a U-turn. Hallelujah. Now, I want to speak on this one because it's important to understand that the promises of God, let me explain again. That's important. 
The promises of God are not stopped even because of your sin. The promises. If it does not take you, it will take somebody else. Hallelujah. When he promised to the children of Israel, no, no, mm -mm. he didn't promise to the children. When he promised to Abraham that the, his children after him will be delivered, we all know that their children were rebellious. There were nothing in them that would have made God want to deliver them. In fact, the Bible said that when he came to them, he said, you worry me with your sins. One time, remember, he wanted to wipe them out. And he said, he said to who is him? Moses. He said, Moses, I'm going to make out of you a nation because them people, they, 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 they're too much. Can you imagine God say you're too much? That's, that's, that's the problem. Because as a human, I can handle you. And I have limit. I handle you for two weeks. The third week, you out. <laughs> he handled them for 40 years. Now, you tell me 40 years of uh, comedy and gratitude, uh, ungratefulness. Imagine you're living with somebody 40 years. Amen. But you see, the promises of God does not do not depend on us the promises of god depend on his faithfulness when you look at you he promised unto you even before you sin for the bible says he knew us when we were where amen he appointed <laughs> she said you say he knew us when we were we were in our womb because she's a mother. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, <laughs> in the promise of God, it depends on his faithfulness. That's why when he told unto Abraham, I will do this, when his children after him did otherwise, God still kept his promise. Now, if you understand this one, you will shift your gear. Because see, if the unbeliever or the sinner can receive grace while he sinned, amen, how much more when you make your father pleased? The difference is that the sin will, we, we kind of like uh, damage the length or damage the hour or damage the path or damage the road in which we attain the promise. So instead of getting it immediately, you will start now going up and down, left and right. That sins. But when you stop pleasing God, you stop moving in the promise immediately. Because his promises are made for you to be also completely and entirely covered. It's like insurance. If you take an insurance and you have something happening and that insurance is covering whatever happened, you will have to no worry. You feel what I'm saying? All you got to do is to call them and say, I got a claim. Amen? When God promised, you can call him and to say, Lord, I have a claim. Are you following? The word of God reminds us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. He said, Come. Let us contend together. State your case so you may be acquitted. Bring in your claim. What is your claim? What did I promise unto you? You see, you cannot only believe the promises of God. You must also enforce the promise of God. 
we're going there. Give me back the word. We are see in chapter 1 of 1 Kings, verse 13. Go ahead. Verse 13. Go and get thee in unto King David and say unto him, This not thou, my Lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while, while thou yet talkest there with, there with the king, I also will come in. I, I also will come in after thee and confirm thy words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old. And Abishag, the Shunammite, ministered now, in this case here, the very old is not definitely by the age. It's by the stature. It's not really by the age. Because, again, 70 years old, he died at 70. 70 is not very old. Amen? But David has been playing around a long time. So I'm certain that even his skin, you know, there are some people... When you look at them, they look 45, and yet they are 20. Have you ever seen that? That's what I'm saying. So, the skin, the appearance, the everything in him got in a place where he looked very old. But he was only 70 when he died. Amen? Continue, please. Uh, 16 and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king and the king said what wouldest thou and now hold on a second the reason why David is a type of Christ everything that you see here has connotation with the prophetic in Christ she comes to the king she makes a plea and Nathan comes behind to what Confirm the plea. And then when, when, when she, she did that, she now bow in reverence to the king. And now the king asks her, what do you want me to do for you? So in that picture, when you start speaking to God concerning the promises he has given unto you, you must have an attitude, an attitude of worship. Does it make sense? It's not, Lord, you told me this. If you don't give to me, I'll leave you. Mm, go. <laughs> Amen? You must have an attitude of worship, of contemplation, of reverence. You stand before him, calling on his promise, Reminding his promise in an attitude of worship. You are certain of what he said. You don't move to the left. You don't move to the right. You stand before the Lord and you say, Lord, remember thee thy promise towards me. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse 17. Verse 17. And she said unto him, My Lord, Thou swarest by the Lord thy God unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, mm -hmm. and he shall sit upon my throne. Mm -hmm. 18. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth, and now, my Lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and had called all the sons of the king, and Abiata the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant had he not called. And thou, my lord, O king, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee. Thou, thou shouldest tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers, 
that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet, and when he was, and they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet, and when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he is gone down this day, and hath slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the king's sons and the captains of the host, and Abiata the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save the king, God save king Adonijah. But me, even me thy servants, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, had he not called. Is this thing done by my lord the king, and thou hast not shewed it unto thy servant, who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then king David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore and said, As the Lord liveth, that that had redeemed my soul out of all distress. Even as I swear unto thee my, by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, Lord, your promises that you have spoken unto me. You are fulfilling them even so this day. Today. The word of God is clear. I don't even need to speak too much. There was an ongoing scheme from the devil to steal the property of Solomon. To steal the inheritance of Solomon. But it was not the desire of David who gave to Solomon. If it was only for David, I'm certain Solomon wouldn't have been king. Are you following? Because Solomon's history was filled with a lot of murder. Are you what I'm saying? If it was only for David, Solomon wouldn't have been king. I say only for David. The reason why Solomon was king, it was not because David wanted him to be king. It was because God told to David that I say, your son Solomon shall be king. So the promise did not come from David. Amen? Say, my promise did not come from men. My promise did not come from my father. My promise did not come from my mother. Are you following me? Solomon was not, you know, looking at just overtake the kingdom. No. But God was watching over his promise. Somebody said, God watches over his promise unto me. See, he was a young boy, Solomon. Very young boy. So there is not much he could do. He cannot rise himself. He cannot do anything. The last time somebody did something was the son of her. David Ab Salom. So I believe Solomon learned the lesson from, from the ongoing. 
I don't want to be killed. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he also knew, certainly from his mother, that there was something that was for him. The mother also knew that God said to David, that David told her that, hey, indeed, your son shall be king after me. The people of God, it is not because God has promised you that it happens. Amen? Because many people do say, oh, if this is for me, it will happen. No, it doesn't work this way. It was for Solomon. It didn't happen. It had to be made happen. Are you following? The promise was for the children of Israel. It didn't happen. Hallelujah. They had to be made it happen. For them to enter the promised land, they did not go by airplane. <laughs> Hallelujah. They had to fight. And they needed somebody to lead them correctly so they can win. You see, the last day they were going, I said the last day, as they were going through the wilderness, they asked to the king of Moab, please let us pass through. It didn't happen. You see what I'm saying? So the promises of God that he made unto you, there is a principle of enforcing his law. Enforcing his word. I told you last time that the same way did Daniel. Daniel look over the promises. The promise said that after 70, 70 years have passed, Amen. He will visit them. So he look into the promise. He see that this is 70 years. He said, I'm going to enforce the promise. How do you enforce the promise of God? Simple. By reminding God what he has said for that day. Hallelujah. It is a promise that God makes unto you. But it is also your prerogative, or should I say, your advantage to remind God. He does not forget. Hallelujah. When I say remind God, it's not because he forgets. It's just as the word of God says. The word of God says, remind me. Bring me in remembrance. In another word, speak out. Why do you need to speak out the promises of God that he made over you? Because the devil, the enemy, has made the people to sit in the lieu or in lieu of your promise. Solomon was not king. The seat of the kingdom was there. But still, Adonijah was reigning. Hallelujah. He was preventing Solomon to access his promise. So through the word of God, we do see that you cannot simply speak and let your promise go in the sense, well, okay, uh, if God wants, it will happen. No, God already wants so. That is the reason why he gave you the promise. Now, the question is, what do you do? Let's read again verse 16. Verse 16, yeah, G give me verse 16, please. Verse 16, and Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, what wouldest thou? Uh, amen. Amen. He, he did not forget everything he ever said to her. But that day, if she did not move, not the next day. Are you know what I'm saying? The reason why I say you cannot simply sit and then say, if it is for me, it will happen. If she would have said that, she would have been dead. That day. Are you know what I'm saying? She would ask her with their son, don't worry. Don't, don't mind them. This one, God has spoken. It will happen. And then sit and wait for it to happen. <laughs> it does not work this way. God is showing you how the path of the enemy are. That's why it says that the children of the world 
of the darkness are wiser because they know and they understand how to utilize the things that God made to move things. Let me repeat again. I told to somebody, I said, many Christians, they have the seed. And God has promised them that they will prosper. That everything your hand touches shall prosper. Now let me explain John to you something. This is where the confusion is. You had the impression that when he said touch, he just touched him and he's finished. <laughs> that is also everything that your hand will touch and no and do and put it in motion and plant it and move it if you have a seed and you see the seed on the on the on the table and you come you touch it in the name of Jesus prosper Mm. Go. When you come back, the miracle ain't happening yet. Hallelujah. And you're still wondering why is your prayer are not answer. The promise is that you must also enforce it by moving into the direction that God is showing you. In the case of this lady, she has already known that the son will be king. David already also received from God that the son will be king. And the prophet, hallelujah, remembered that the son will be king. But who did not want him to be king? The other son. Now listen, according to the law of men, it was right for Adonijah to be king. Because he was older than Solomon. And as I said last time, if you have that order, it is normal that the first receive more and the least receive least. But in the kingdom of God, it's not like that. The kingdom of God, the first will be last and the last will be first and the great will be small and the small will be great. So that day, Bathsheba, she was sitting. She did not even move. She did not move at all. If the king, uh, uh, I said the king, if Nathan the prophet wouldn't have come to tell her, listen unto me today. Are you know what I'm saying? Here's the problem why so many people are stuck. God sends his messenger. He speaks to you. And then you say, okay, I will go pray about it. <laughs> oh, tell, tell your neighbor change. <laughs> this, this is the problem. When you have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that you recognize his voice. My sheep know my voice. If God talks because you have his spirit, you will know that God has spoken. But when you don't recognize that God has spoken, it simply means what it means. You are in the chicken flesh. Are you what I'm saying? <laughs> so in reality the I'm going to pray about it it means I'm going to remove all the chicken flesh and then see if I find a little spirit inside <laughs> and then find out what God but when you already know let me put it this way God said you will have children now, people believe that they will be single, not married, and have children. Because for them, if Mary had the child without a man, then they can have a child without a man. 
The only problem is that it happened only once. Amen? This case is closed. It ain't going to happen again. No one, regardless of your prayer and of your faith, your child, we need a man. Hallelujah. And that man, we need to marry you. Hallelujah. Now, person I received the promise, oh, I see that next year you will be married at this time. And at the time she received the promise, she believes she knows that God has spoken because she was praying about it. She was praying concerning. She even had a dream the same day. And then she says, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Now, from now until the next year, it is 12 months, right? First month, the first guy arrives. She look at him. That's not from God. Okay. Second month, the second guy arrives. She look at him. That's not from God. Okay. The tenth month, hallelujah, the tenth guy arrives. She look at him. That's not from God. The twelfth month, the twelfth guy arrives. She look at him. That's not from God. And after the next year, <laughs> she said, Lord, you promised to me. Let me explain why. When God has given her the promise, she should have enforced it by praying, by saying, Lord, show me the one you have sent. Open my spirit. Open my mind. Open my eyes. That I may see. Because let me tell you. To have a husband or a wife. You need to see the flesh first. Does it, does it make sense? If you don't see the person. How would you know is the person? Even if you dream about the person. But you don't see the person. How would you know? So Lord open my eyes to see. And let me know. That when the day arrives, I'll be disposed. Meanwhile, she should put herself correctly. I did not say she should be extravagant. I say correctly, decent, correctly, proper. The husband will arrive. When he comes in, he will simply ask her, how old are you? <laughs> and that's all. He won't, talk, he won't talk much. He won't be saying, uh, uh, Mademoiselle, uh, I will speak in French. Mademoiselle, vous avez les yeux revolver. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because in French, I don't know how to say, I say, in English, I don't know how to say, il y a les yeux revolver. Amen. It means like, because zero of it is like a Chinese eyes. Like a, a tire. <laughs> so you come to the lady. Oh, when I saw you, my soul rejoiced in Lord my Savior. She said, like, this is Lucifer in the light. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> so, you have to be disposed to recognize the one that God has sent. That is because prior it, you were praying. And prior it, God has spoken. So you have to be disposed. But when your promise comes, it's not the time now to test the water to see whether it is from God or not. Because remember, it is your promise. When your promise arrives, you seize it. Let me give you another example. You pray to have a business. God opened the door. God opened the door. But what you don't understand is that God can use the devil to bless you. That's what you don't get. You are only waiting for Gabriel to bless you. Let me add something. The Bible says that there was a guy his name was King Nebu. Was he a man of God? Did he know God? Was he filled of the Holy Ghost? 
Okay. Nebuchadnezzar was a demonically possessed man. You forget that God is about the devil. Are you, are you getting it? You are forgetting that God is way above the devil. He made the devil. The Bible says, when God promised unto Joseph, you will have many cult and you will be high. Who caused him to become high? No, the devil. What am I saying? It was the devil who put in the heart of the children of uh, Israel to sell him. Was it God? Let me explain this so you don't confuse yourself. When God told by dream to Joseph, you're going to be the first. He told that dream to his brothers. Did they pray for him? Did I praise God? Did I say, oh, we need to help you achieve your dream? What was in the heart? Covetousness, hatred, jealousy. Was it from God? The devil entered the heart of their children thinking he's going to thwart the plans of God. But the Bible tells us, when the devil has tried to shipwreck the ship of Paul, was he God? It was not God. But God told to Paul, I promise you, you will arrive where? In Rome. Hallelujah. Now, he did not tell him that you're going to arrive with the same boat. He said you're going to arrive at Rome. After the devil attacked him, he was on the way to Rome. He had insight, wisdom. He had insight to know that if we go this way, we will lose all. The devil entered the heart of that other guy. He said, let's go anyway. The Bible said when they looked, they saw the, the, the sky were, were, um, were clear, were favorable to engage. The devil deceived them. The word of God came and told them, no, don't advance. The devil said, oh, look at the sky. It's clear. When they went, after they lost the, the boat, in the midst of it, Paul was sitting. He says so much they were beaten by the activity of the devil that he himself, Paul, he came to a place to lose all hope. Are you following? That who spoke to Paul? It was not a man. Because when you read the word of God, the Lord Jesus appeared to Paul and told him, you will go to Rome. So while the people were attempting to kill him in, the, um, in uh, Israel, they told to the, to the king, the judge, they said, please, free him. Let him be free. When he comes out, we will take him and kill him. So all the orchest orchest orchestration of the enemy were not outside the control of God. As long as you know with certainty that this is the route I'm taking to arrive, you can enforce the promise. Paul finally realized that, listen, before the devil attacked, God already said, I will arrive there. But it's not because God said he will arrive there that he just sit down and then looked. He also moved. He spoke. He tried to convince. He, he put in. And finally, you see our Paul arrive at the Isle, which is called the Malta. Isle Malta. When he arrived at Isle Malta, the devil again does what? 
sends a, a serpent, a viper. How many times have you ever met a viper in your life? When I say viper, I'm not talking about the viper in the ground. Like a human being that looks like a viper. <laughs> they have poison in their mouth. They look at you, they say, you, you, will, be, you will be nothing. Are you know what I'm saying? How many times have not you met people who just wanted you to be crushed? Who are just jealous because you leave? But are they coming from God? But when you know that the promises God has spoken is yours, all of what they do will not prevent what God say he will do as long as you are enforcing what God say he will do. As long as you are staying true to what God say he will do. As long as that regardless on how the enemy does, you know that all things work together for good, your good, to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So at the end of the day, they put Joseph in prison. The devil tried to cause Joseph to cause adultery. Hallelujah. It was not God. Amen. God will not tempt him with adultery. And because of the devil, he went to jail. Hallelujah. But you see, notice something. When he was in jail, he met those who were the butler and the baker of the king. Listen carefully. They were connected to the king. Joseph perceived his freedom inside. Are you following? He perceived his freedom right inside. And he didn't simply pray, oh Lord, let the heart be touched. No. He used his mouth. And he told to one of them, he said, you, when you get out, remember me. Are you following? He used his words and spoke because he knew that his destiny was not the jail. God has promised you. You're not moving. You're not speaking. You're not defending. You're not planting. You're not making it. Up. And then you're believing it will just fall with the angels. That's the deceit of the enemy. So when your hand touch the seed, your hand shall grab the seed and your hand shall plant the seed. And your hand shall water the seed. And your hand shall remove the weed. And your hand shall harvest. Hallelujah. So the devil will not just want you to achieve or succeed simply just because God has promised you. In contrary, because God has promised you, that is why the devil is against you. <laughs> Amen? But listen, as long as you remain true to God, Bathsheba remained true to God. She remained true to God. How? Because when the prophet came and he said, listen to me, she knew who he was. She knew. She knew that this man is a man of God. He's not talking to me nonsense. Hallelujah. She remained true to God. When she heard the sound of that man of God, she heard the son of God. Because he told her by the voice of the Lord, today, if you don't move, this very day, you're done. Amen? Now imagine Bathsheba. She called her son. Please, let's go talk to Adonijah. 
to make him understand. <laughs> no. As I said last time, you don't go to the fool to reason him. Hallelujah. You go in the hospital, and then, well, like how we call it, psychiatric hospital. You arrive there, and then you see a man in the blues, uh, a blouse, a, you know, those, no, 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 no. Like he, he, he has a, put on like a, the white one for the, for the doctor. So, normally, if you see a man in that white thing, you will automatically assume that is the doctor. But that day, that guy who's a madman has just happened to steal the blouse of the doctor. You see him, and then in his appearance, he tells you, Hello, sir, what do you want? And then you say, oh, um, I came to pray for people, um, those who are mad here. Can you show me how to go about it? And the, the guy is like, <laughs> like, you know, you had a blouse, you are looking like a doctor by your actions. <laughs> Amen. Your actions look like a madman. Are you what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says you recognize them by day. So your action will speak on your behalf. Your words will speak on your behalf as long as you remain true to God. You must enforce the promise. You must claim them because it is yours. You cannot simply pray about it. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday we went to, to where? To Acura, the dealership. We arrived there, we were sitting, and my dad said, Daddy, talk to them about satellite power. And I was like, ah. <laughs> And she said, yeah, yeah, go ahead, talk to them about satellite power. And I realized that my children are more galvanized <laughs> than myself. So I said, okay, I'm going to do that. But thank God, as we were going, I grabbed one of the sample, and we went with that. I did not know what would I do. I was not even thinking to do anything there. I just said, I will grab the sample. If I see somebody, I will speak to the person. But here's the thing. I arrived in a place that is covered by money because they sell car and premium car. So... I, can you get it? So you are in the midst of a money maker. And then you pray that the guy who's passing on the road over there will see you. <laughs> so my dad has said, Daddy, talk to them about Satellar Power. So I do, I do not know where to start. I say, Lord, lead me. So I grab the sample. I put it outside on the table. And I went back in. There was like a, a uh, how do you call it? A glass, glass room. We were sitting there with the family. And then we can see people passing. So I put that outside there on the table. And people were passing. And I was looking at them. And, then, and one guy went. And he started doing like this. Looking at it. And then he's like, he's like a bait. Yeah, you, you, you know now that your bait has, has, has beaten. So you just have to pull it out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I went to him and I started speak. When I went, he even jumped because he didn't know I was coming. And I said, Well, this is this, this is this, this is a this, 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 this. I explained to him everything what it is. He was like, Whoa, 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 whoa. And then he said, You know what? You need to meet the owner of this of this place. If 
I would have bread about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I wouldn't have met those who are in decision making. You know, it was whether it was Friday. We were praying that the decision that God will bring us to the decision maker. You remember? That we will not go through the the secretary. Amen. <laughs> that we will go straight to the decision maker. The next day, Saturday, I was there. The decision maker could have been somewhere sick or somewhere in, in, in a, I don't know, in a trip. But that day he was there. So the general manager came and I spoke with him. He looked at me. He said, please give me your card. I'm going to get back to you within those two weeks. Now, let me explain this. If I was only praying about it, you understand there is nothing wrong about praying. But it is wrong when you pray and you don't move. When God say, move. Hallelujah. To the children of Israel, he told them when they were against the Red Sea, he told them, get up and move. So when God parts for you an opportunity, he parts for you a way he tells you your promise has arrived. Don't be praying about it. No. Enter while you pray. I always say this. If you go to Walmart, regardless how you are anointed, you need to come near the door for the door to sense you, for it to open. When you arrive, you must move closer to the door. So you need to be in that presence for the sensor to, to sense you, hallelujah, for it to open. Now you go. You see the sensor. People go through and you are amazed. And you start praising God. Oh, Lord, this is wonderful, the work of God through man. Door open. <laughs> well, so you need to move. You need to move. Let me tell you another thing. I share with my wife. I say enforcing the promise has to do with first, did God promise to you? That's the first thing. Because if he didn't promise to you, you're going to enforce just the wind. Amen. <laughs> but when God promised to you, you know that this he has said, I did not come in this place. I, mm, Lord Jesus, thank you. For those of you who were here, if you remember, uh, it was at least two or three months ago. In one of the Sunday, the Lord was speaking on how, he was speaking on how, Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Three, two or three Sunday, he was speaking on how he gave us he, he gave us the 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 territory, and that oh Lord help me. There you go. He gave us the territory, and we were reading from 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 the whole testament, and inside it was saying that there were, no, 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 the New Testament, and inside they were talking about the kingdom of heaven, and I was making an analogy, and I was saying, where you at? Oh, you're, you're, you're probably forgot about it. You're probably forgot about it. But anyway, that day, as I was sharing the word of God through the spirit of God, I realized through the word of God that he was putting what I call the puzzle together. And few months after, I start seeing the move of God, and I start knowing that this is the time to move. We have had time to pray, and God is now making things happen. It's a time to move, to engage, and then to be in. You know what I'm saying? It's a time to be among, to move in. 
For your hand to touch, you need to take your feet to go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prosperity is not complicated. Because it is the will of God to be making you, what? Prosper. But that prosperity, remember, it is to build a kingdom. But the builder has a house. The one who feed has food. Because he said, he gave seed to the sower. So when God gives you and you build a kingdom, do you think that you will go broke? Enforcing the promise, whoever God has spoken, whatever God has spoken in your life. Now, here is a simple thing, simple test. Did God tell you you will die poor? Because if he told you that, then you have, you have to die poor. <laughs> Amen. If the Lord did not tell you, you will die poor. There is at least one thing that you know is word. Where do you find the premises of God? It is word. How do you know that the promises of God in the word are yours? Because you believe it. Why do we believe it? Because the Bible says that his word is spirit and life and gives life. So it will give life in places where you need life. That, 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 does it make sense? So if you have not heard the audible voice of God, but you know the word of God, and you have believed the word of God, you like David. Strengthen yourself in the Lord. For fact, I will give you so many facts. For fact, I was reading from the book of Genesis. And that day, I was locked up. And I could not do anything. I was alone. I had no one to help me. And I was reading Genesis and I read in the book, of Genesis and I read concerning the um, the flood. And as I was reading concerning the flood, the Bible said, and the waters prevailed over the earth for 150 days. I was just reading the word of God. But when I saw that, I knew by faith that in 150 days, my case were settled. I so knew it that I even shouted concerning it. You know, sometimes you know God will do something, but you don't say something. So that uh, if it happens, you say, oh, I knew it. If it doesn't happen, <laughs> that's not good. If you know what God will do, and then you know he will do it. The announcement is the prophecy unto others. Because that day they will say, indeed, the Lord has done what he say he will do. And 150 days has arrived. Top on the chrono. And God moved in a place that was impossible. Don't sit down to wait for the promise. Listen, the promised land was not in Goshen. Hallelujah. The promised land again was not in Goshen. The promised land was over there. The reason why they were sitting waiting, it was until God moves. But once God has said go, you cannot sit and wait.
ministry, finances, marriage, business, children, school, whatever, studies. What is the thing that God has said he will lift you up in? Hallelujah. You got to move. Tell to somebody move. 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 Hallelujah. You got to move. Because he did not give you the promise for you to stay stuck. You got to change position. You got to change position. Get in the place that God said, I will give unto you wherever the soul of your feet will trample upon. Hallelujah. How much of insight do you get from God? Understanding that he wills to cause you to advance. Sometimes you will need to pursue after it. Hallelujah. Let me explain to you something. There are things which are for you that without running after it, you may not get it. And that thing oftentimes is because the enemy has taken them away. So like David, you cannot simply say, oh, I give it to God. You must know first whether it is because of laziness that you give it to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or because God told you, give it up. Amen. But to enforce the promise, again, you must move towards that promise. You must speak towards that promise. You must work towards that promise. You said you want to do something. What are the materials that you use to develop what you need to do. Listen, you do not need one million dollars to become a billionaire. No. You just need the promise of God. I, Lord Jesus, help me. You do not need one million dollars to become a billionaire. You need the promise of God. Let me explain. In the world, people who became billionaires, I see in the world, God did not promise them. Uh, but how did they do? They moved. The reason why they succeeded is not because God promised them. But it's because God promised the principle of success. To say, it will be day, it will be night. It will be summer, it will be spring. It will be fall, it will be winter. Let me explain again. In winter time, the people of the world, they know they can build a greenhouse. Because they understood the principle of summer that God made. So they built a greenhouse in winter. And they plant in winter in the greenhouse. They don't pray about it. They understand that God said, I let my rain fall on the just and the unjust. So they move in the direction of what God has already made to move and to be for this world. So they know how to move towards it. 
Now, why do I say all we need is a promise? It's because on the top of what God already said, he promised to you, you will be at the head. How do you get at the head? You move. If there is a flow of something, and then you waiting, doing nothing, you will find yourself at the tail. Now you will be thinking to yourself, oh, the first will be last, and the last will be first. No, the last will be last in your case. Why? Because when God tells you, move towards your destiny, it means you have to intentionally want to arrive there. You have to intentionally want to get there. And you have to intentionally want to pull in, put your hand in the plow. My brother Abanda, he wanted a car. He took his two feet. He saw my car. He started praying about it. It didn't happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he wanted a car. So after he said, okay, I'm going to see, he went somewhere. He arrived there, he saw a car. He said, I want to buy this. They told him, no problem. Come. He went. For, help me with this. He, had, he went, and the people just sold the car. And after the people sold the car, they told him, don't worry. You're going to have another one we're going to give to you. And still, they sold the car. So he came to me. He said, ah, prophet, I need a car. Please find a car for me. Even if it's 3000 or whatever, I will pay for it. I look at him. I said, let me pray for you. So I pray for him, I gave him the word. Whatever week happened, the brother went, he arrived in a place that they call auction. When he arrived to the place, he has already had an idea of which car he wanted, so he took the picture prior to the time. But the day he arrived there, he saw a car coming. When he saw the car coming, he said, forget about the picture. <laughs> I'm seeing the real thing, and then you want to remind me about the picture. Isn't that the real thing over there? He told to the friend that was with him, this is the car I need. Now listen carefully. He had 3000 in his mind to pay a car. But when he saw the car that was coming, People start bidding on the car. They say, one dollar. <laughs> Two dollar. <laughs> one thousand. One thousand thirty. Until the car arrived. How much was it? One nine. They say one eight hundred or whatever. And he was like, he talked to his brother. Say one nine, one thousand nine hundred. The brother said, ah, no, we have to wait for the car of the picture. <laughs> he said, why do you want to look on the picture? Here's a car that this is for us. This is for me. This is the one I want. You will understand promise. He said, 1,900. The guy said, 1,001. 1,102. 1,001. God has shut the mouth of everybody. <laughs> so he got a car and he got he got he got a, a, a saving on the money because in the beginning he was thinking about three thousand. Hallelujah. He gets a car, what he wanted, and he has one thousand one hundred on the top of it. Imagine, 
that he saw the car. He was like, Riba so koto robato koti bodo 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 kadi bake shada shabada angel of God and let it be. When he finished, the car is gone. Hey, okay, give the picture. <laughs> Hallelujah. The attempt to pray, the attempt to move. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Enforce the promises. Enforce the promise. The Lord already said, I will bless you in your going. I will bless you in your coming. I will bless you in your staying. When you don't see the blessing as he said he will bless you, you must speak it, enforce it, seek for it, work in it, go towards it. Because he said he will do so. So when you don't see it, it means there are activities in the air. A groupment of Adonijah. Hallelujah. A groupment spirit of Adonijah. And there are captains of hosts who are gathering themselves with the spirit of Adonijah. Who are sitting and then feasting. Having a party over your property. Hallelujah. You cannot simply let them have what God says he will give to you. He took one day for a turnaround. In only one day, if she wouldn't have moved Bathsheba, that day, it was over. You have been silent for too long. You have been waiting for too long. You have been silent for too long. Lord, I refuse that I will pass over this 2023 rock. Uh -uh. I refuse. I have waited on your promise. But you told me to step in your promise. Are you following? So I'm going towards your promises because you have spoken them even before I knew you. And as I come unto you in covenant, then therefore you establish it. The word of God says, decree a thing. And it shall be established. You must go towards what God said. You must enforce it. They call them law enforcement officers. The law itself does not arrest nobody. The law itself does not do nothing to nobody. But they enforce it and it becomes active. The power of the word of God resides in the faith you have put inside and the move you do with that. I'll repeat again. The power of the word of God resides in the faith that you have placed inside that word and the move you do with that word. Then he produced power. Look at how power is produced and you will understand electricity. They take elements, materials, 
they put them together and they and he produce electricity even when god needed to make the light i say he could have thought of it amen but he spoke it he made an activity with his word do not sit idle do not wait no longer because the time has arrived when he wants you to step into the promise hallelujah you must enforce tell to yourself my soul listen the word and enforce the promise of god within me so that my feet my hands my mind my heart works together towards it propel me towards it push me into it to fulfill the pleasure of my father Your soul has to bother you. To say no. That is not the place that God has said I should be. And your soul is not at rest. Your soul starts now boiling inside of you. To say no. No. I will not sit idle. Just letting go what God said it is. Mine. Give me verse 30, uh, 30, 31, 32, and we'll finish with that. Verse 31. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the, to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord... Uh, no, no. G give me 30, please. Sorry. 30. Uh -huh. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Okay. Before we continue, I want you to see something. When you pray about something, Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. When you pray concerning something, God speaks to you, and you know God has spoken. Now you go towards somebody, and God shows you who you have to go to, and you write to the person, and you tell to the person, um, the Bible says, ask, and it shall be given unto you. But now you ask under the coverage, under the word of God, and you see that the person is not moving, but you know that that person is supposed to move because it is how God has led you towards the person. Well, what you got to do is to enforce it. And how you do it? David was not the one who gave the promise. Remember? You want to remember that. It was not David who said to her that I will do it by my will. It was God who spoke to David this is what you're going to do. What it means is that when God gives you a promise, the person who God will use to move or to activate that promise in your life, God also speaks to the person. Are you following? But now the Bible says he was hold of age. You can use it as like uh, the things of this world. Things of this world goes and can pressure people, and people can forget about you. Are you know what I'm saying? But when God said, this is how I want you to receive, this is the person you must call. When you call the person, the person will say, oh, I forgot, please call me tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> Why? I will call you tomorrow. You are here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me talk to you about somebody. He's a man of God that told him that he wanted to do an activity. And he needed some finances. And somebody said, ah, man of God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, 
finance. I'm, go I'm going to supplement all the finances you need. He said, okay. So he went with the guy. No, no. First, the guy came. He came to church. And when he arrived to church, he told to the man of God, he said, ah, I forgot the check I had for you home. The man of God said, let's drive. Let's go to your home. <laughs> uh, yes. He took the guy that went home. They arrived home. The guy opened the Bible he usually used to take the check out of it. The check is not there. His wife went to another church. She took his Bible with the, with the check inside. Do you see the activities? So the man of God, he said, call your wife. <laughs> I will not let the devil hijack my blessing. Call your wife. He calls the wife, and the wife says, oh, oh, no worry. Now, next Sunday when we come, he said, next Sunday, let us drive to that church. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. His name is, is called uh, Bishop Duncan. 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 He said, let us drive to that church. Because here's the thing. False modesty calls you to lose your blessing. You feel what I'm saying? When God said, I will do for you this, he calls somebody to give you something. You have to receive it with thanksgiving. Let me explain that. The Bible said, receive with thanks, giving. Why do you thank giving? Because you are saying yes to what God has said you will have. But God says, you will have it. They give it to you and you're like, hey, is that for me? Hey, hey. It's not for you. Give it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Receive with thanks, giving. Now, the last word, to enforce your promise, you must learn to receive. If you cannot receive, then you will not receive. Hallelujah. To enforce your promises, you must learn to receive. For when God gives without hands to have, there will no, there will no be possession. So you must learn to receive. Give me the two verses and we finish. 31 and 32. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my lord King David live forever. And King David said, Call me Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And, and they came before the king. Continue. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solom Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gion. And, and let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there king over Israel, and blow he with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. Then he shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my lord the king say, say so too. As the Lord hath been with my lord the king, even so be he with Solomon and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and the Cheretite and the Peletite went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule and brought him to Gion. And Zadok the priest took an horn, an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon, 
and they blew the trumpet and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people say, God save King Solomon. He became king just in the twinkling of the eye. And now I go, he was a little boy about to die. The enemy has taken over Judah, but God has assigned him over Judah and Israel. If you are distracted by all the enemy has, you will lose, lose focus on where God is establishing you. God calls him to ride upon the arm mule of King David. The enemy were feasting. They were reigning in the city, but the enemy were not sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. The enemy is not sitting on the throne of your blessing. Hallelujah. He is only gathering around as a distraction to get you to lose focus so he can steal what is yours. But the word of God says that he has appointed him to be king over Israel and Judah. And they blew the trumpet. And they anointed him. But the will of God, through the agreement of that will with David, and all the prophets of God and the servants of God, agree with the word of God and they established him. How many prophets have spoken the word of God? Hallelujah. All they had to take was the priest and the prophets. And the prophet came, and the priest came, and the servant came, and they did what the king said, and he was appointed king over Israel and Judah. You have in this the prophets. Hallelujah. You have this, in this the word and the promise of God. So you have a witness in your hand. Hallelujah. You have a witness in your hand. Shall we pray? Father, I bless your name, Lord God, for today, for providing unto us a way out, for us to receive from thee and to learn from thee. Lord God, let us not be idle, but let us walk towards what you have promised. So we may enforce the promises that you have spoken without giving anything to the enemy, without giving any room to the enemy. For you say we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Whatever place where we are blindsided, whatever spot where we are blindsided, I pray, Lord God, that you open our eyes. Lord, I pray also that you shut the mouth of every tongue that rise in judgment against us, against your children. I pray, Lord Jesus, that every tongue that rise in judgment today be condemned. For every word that they have spoken shall not have effect. For your word said that, Lord, it is your will that we be at the tail and, and that we will not be at the tail. That it is your will that we be at the head and not at the tail. It is not your will that we be at the tail. So Lord God, I pray thee that by your grace you give us the ability, Lord God, not to be distracted. Let your word of truth be with us. Let your word galvanize us and push us towards our destiny. Even this day. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen.